It is Thursday, December 30th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Thursday puzzle today. It's our first tricky puzzle of the week. I always think about the Thursdays in that way. And we will have some kind of theme and probably a theme that's a bit uh, a bit unusual or has some kind of clever mechanic or something that we have to figure out as opposed to just uh, a topic that's shared by a number of uh, clues or something like that. Anyway, um, I hope you are ready for that. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. I thought I had something to say and then I realized I didn't. But I do have something to say, which is that this uh, this edition of The Daily Solve is brought to you by Alex, Robert B., and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. There's a link in the description field underneath the video. And at that uh, benefactor level, in addition to that recognition in these videos, you can get the mug, the Daily Solve exclusive Let's Check the Crosses mug. But at any level of the Patreon, you get access to um, the wealth of bonus video solves. I intend to do a few more of those today to make up for my absence. Um, and an additional channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. And I wanted to mention the Discord chat server again today, uh, which is free for anyone to join, even if you don't have the extra Patreon channel, because suddenly, in <laughs> almost overnight, it's become consumed by this uh, free online word game called Wordle which I had also been playing for a few days, so it was fun to see it pop up in the um, Discord chat server. Let me switch over to it. Um, it's, uh, it's a little game where you guess the day's word by um, putting in guesses of any word, and then it will tell you which letters you have correct, which letters are present in the final word but in the wrong position, and so on. And anyway, I thought maybe I would solve that. I would, maybe I'd try today's at the end of today's puzzle. I won't do it now so that I don't... I don't want to delay getting to the main uh, focus of this video unduly, but uh, maybe I thought I would I would do today's after the video just to help sort of participate in that uh, little thing that's going on in the Discord chat server. And you can post a record of your guesses in a non-spoiler fashion with a little image that the game will create for you. It's hard to explain, but it's 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 well done and non-spoilery, but still shows how quickly you guessed the word. Anyway, all of that being said, let's move on to yesterday's crossword. And there were actually several, um, several interesting notes. So let me let me try and get through those fairly quickly. We have one from ZOR95 who says, there's an added pun in the ice pack clue. And if you remember from yesterday's puzzle, ice pack, question mark, went on to uh, indicate hitmen, a, a pack of men who will carry out uh, who will ice their targets. And ZOR95 says, there's an ice hockey team called the Calgary Hitmen. Named after legendary uh, wrestler Brett the Hitman Hart, who hails from that area, and they play in the pink and black colors associated with the Hart family wrestlers. So there we go. Ice Pack Hitmen. And Robert Stevenson observes that I never went back to the answer that was clued as being longer than a foot and the answer was shoe. Very clever. By definition, a shoe must be longer than a foot because it surrounds a foot. Kathy Swope points out that NCR, which was um, uh, clued as an ATM manufacturer, was originally the Na National Cash Register Company. Founded in the late 1800s, they virtually owned the cash register market. In the 80s and 90s, as registers became computerized, NCR pivoted to focus on software solutions run on their proprietary hardware. And she also um, adds a bit of context around chia pets, which are covered in a paste of chia seeds, an edible seed of the salvia hispanica. Salvia hispanica. They have a mild nutty taste, but in a chia pet, they're just about growing a lush green cover not meant to be consumed. Indeed. And chia seeds also, I think, more commonly now associated with, I guess, sort of health food. People put them in yogurt and granola and things like that. Uh, or not in granola, but paired with granola in yogurt, that sort of thing. Noel, Noel Barrett has a funny observation that I couldn't help but mention. What a funny thing to notice. I didn't notice this myself. The answer chest appeared in the exact same position on the Tuesday, December 28th crossword, the top right corner of the grid. Go figure. <laughs> no idea if that was intentional, but a funny observation. And finally, 
Um, I really enjoyed this. Brian D said, relating to the clue, what travels on sound waves? And in this case, sound, there's some misdirection because we, we hear sound waves. And of course we think uh, waves of audio sound, but indeed it referred to a body of water, the sound. And Brian says, sound is one of my favorite etymologies because each meaning of it, of which there are many, seems to come from a different unrelated source. Sound, what you hear, comes from the Latin sonos. Sound, as in hale and hearty, of sound mind, for instance, comes from the German gesund, which means health. And finally, sound, the body of water, comes from the Norse sund, which means to swim. That is very interesting and, and makes sense um, because those things do, you could sort of try and invent ways in which those things all share some kind of similar meaning, but they really don't seem to, and it turns out they don't. So very interesting etymological note from Brian D. Okay, let's get on to... Uh, that took a while. So let's get on to today's puzzle, the Thursday puzzle. This is, of course, a Thursday crossword by John Eubank. This is a debut New York Times uh, puzzle for John Eubank, who apparently hails from uh, the UK, which is... Uh, so he, he he is a Brit. I am not a Brit, but I do live in the UK. And uh, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So we'll see if we can pick up any British influence in this uh, puzzle. Okay, ready to get started. Flatbread from India. Well, in four letters, it could be non or roti, I would think. Not sure which, so let's check the crosses. Hutch occupant. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, a rabbit. Actually, you know what? I might pause this and take a drink of water before I get going. <laughs> I don't want to start this off with a hoarse voice. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's, let's get going here. So with hutch occupant seemingly being rabbit, I think the flatbread from India would be roti. And then here we have um sure. Um sure, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm in maybe? Although that doesn't really seem um sure sounds very tentative, but I'm in sounds more confident. Let's check the other crosses. Sarcastic, is that so? Oh I don't know. There's some <laughs> there's some tentativeness and sarcasm here that I'm not quite picking up on. Or it's not that I'm not picking up on it, it's that I am picking up on it and can't discern the uh, the proper phrases. Anyway, Japanese mat, a tatami mat, I think that would be. And a captain who cries from hell's heart, I stab at thee. That would be Ahab from Moby Dick. Oh, I'm sure, I suppose, is I bet. And a tiny bit of information. It's probably probably a bite, a uh, tiny bit of computerized information in this case. And no clue could be beats me. Words declared before and after what? I am? No. What? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't quite see this. Uh, what else could this be? Ism? Words declared. Words. More than one word. I am? I am what? What I am? I, I understand what I am. I am what? I think it must be that, but I don't quite understand it. I'm sorry. Sarcastic, is that so? It must be simply, oh yeah. So maybe more straightforward than I was making it. Emmy-winning comedy series of 2007, 2008, and 2009. Uh, 30 Rock, based on those crosses, I would think. Web destinations are sites... Ingredient in an old-fashioned. Uh, rye whiskey is an old-fashioned. Certainly is yes. And awards won by Presidents Carter, Clinton, and Obama. Um, I'm not sure. They won some kind of Emmy somehow? That doesn't seem plausible. Sunfish with colorful gill covers. Not sure. Let's get back to the acrosses here. Top notch. Top notch. I'm not sure. J to blank. J Lo. Jennifer Lopez album. Oh no, it's not J to blank. Sorry, I don't know what I said. I think I read that completely incorrectly. J to blank L O. So it must be J to the L O. There we go. Um. In that sort of. Uh, I don't know, that sort of slangy way that was that was fashionable, I don't know, maybe about a decade ago, maybe even more. Classic poems set in bleak December. 
Um, it's not the Raven, is it? Let's check the cross on 16. Conned? Well, it could be had. Someone was had. They were conned. Oh, maybe it's not the Riddle and Target for short. Oh, it must be the with an A. J2 the L O. That must be that must be what it is. And then a riddle and target would be ADHD. Sorry, I was confused about I, I thought this must be ADHD, but then the, that didn't make sense. But then I then that it's even more slangy than I than I had assumed. Okay, let's see. What else do we have in here? Virulent negativity in modern parlance. Virulent negativity, something around hating. Um Oh, could it could it possibly be a haterism? I actually don't think I've heard that before. I'm sort of just making that up and hoping it's real, but I have no idea if it's correct. Let's see. Maybe it's not. I don't think so. Blank worthy. I'm not sure. It could be any number of things. Stamps, maybe. Could be okays, as in gives your stamp of approval. I don't know about haterism. That seems like seems like a bit of a reach. So let's let's get rid of it. All right. Um, let's keep going through the crosses. What the twenty first amendment achieved? Oh boy, I should really know this, shouldn't I? Which one was the twenty first amendment? I can never remember the amendment numbers of the U. This would be of the U.S. Constitution, of course. Um, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to move on. They stay and bite. Not sure. Propelled from a bench. Propelled from a bench. Not sure. And here we have product whose first commercial was notably narrated by Jeff Goldblum. Well, this I remember for a ridiculous reason. I think it's the iMac. Um, there was a series of commercials in which Jeff Goldblum said, he sort of described how to set up your iMac and use it and what you can do with it. And then he would say things like, you're the creator of, you're the director of great stuff. And there was someone who, in a, in a very early example, I suppose, of something being going viral on the internet, uh, pre-YouTube, pre-social media, before any of these things, and when videos had to just be shared individually as a video file, uh, someone slowed it down. And when you slow down Jeff Goldblum's kind of manic voice, he sounds basically drunk. So he would, in the video, he's saying, you're the creator of great stuff. And that and uh, that was an iMac commercial, and that's why I remember the answer to this clue. <laughs> anyway, awards won by Presidents Carter, Clinton, and Obama. Oh, Grammys, perhaps? I wonder if that was for audiobook recordings or something. Are there Grammys for audiobook recordings? I have no idea. I can't think what else they would have won Grammy awards for. Maybe one of them also was on some kind of charity song recording or something like that. No idea. Top notch. Oh, it could be grade A. And sunfish with colorful gill covers. Why do I not see what this is? That's very frustrating. Shopkeeper on The Simpsons, um, Apu, I believe. And Joe Biden's home is Delaware. He was the senator from Delaware before becoming vice president. Uh, down ebb? No. Choir section could be the altos um, in the sort of classic soprano, alto, tenor, bass voice uh, categorization. Oh, what the 21st Amendment appealed. Was it achieved? Was it repeal of um, prohibition? Must be. That's very vague that it's simply repeal, but I suppose that is often referred to in that way, even though many things can be repealed. So maybe I simply don't know this fish. Sunfish with colorful gill covers. I must not know it. Huh, that's frustrating. They stay and bite. Adult teeth? There we go. That's good. <laughs> that's a funny clue. They stay and bite. They stay in the sense that they don't uh, fall out like children's teeth do. Adult teeth. Very good. Very clever. And here we have propelled from a bench, right? Propelled from a bench. Why do I not see that? And per is each, per item, each item. Oh, oh, maybe ord. Um, 
the bench of a rowboat and you, you're oaring it. Uh, you're propelling the boat with the oars, that is. So maybe, maybe this is the Raven. And oh, I see Oscar worthy is in a film, can be Oscar worthy of an Academy Award. So we'll put in the Raven. Oh, is it? Oh, yes. Okay. I saw this HV and that looked bad. But in fact, climate control system in brief HVAC. I actually don't remember what that stands for. Heat and something air conditioning. I don't remember. All right. Virulent negativity. Okay. So it is hate or something. Hateray. Hateraid? Is that sort of a portmanteau of hater and Gatorade? It sort of sounds vaguely familiar. URL ending. What a funny thing. <laughs> the New York Times crossword. Anyway, URL ending is edu um, uh, for uh, educational establishment websites. A scoundrel is a cur. A sounder. Oh, sound, no, not a sounder. What was I thinking? But rather sounder as in more sound. That's, oh, and there we go. Actually, um, referring back to one of the etymologies of sound that was explained to us before this puzzle began. In this case, the one meaning hailer and hardier, or in this case, more sound of mind, saner. There we go. From um, Gesund, from German, as we learned. Oh, sorry. I think I just... Oh, here's the revealer. Yes, I just accidentally flipped over it and didn't notice. Um, so here we have our theme revealer. This is... I real. I didn't even realize that Adult Teeth and 30 Rock had anything in common, but apparently they do because they're both part of this puzzle's theme. And this says, symbol for the starts of 1827, 46 and 58 across. So symbol for the starts of Adult and 30. Ah, it's, it's three X's. That's very clever. So XXX often used to indicate things for adults, like adult films, for instance, or um, I guess poison. It's not so much adult as more, in that case, more dangerous, I guess. So not, not really adult. But then we have 30 rock. And of course, three X's is the Roman numeral for 30, or the, the Roman numeral uh, equivalent of 30. Very good. So we'll have two more of those. Let's see if we can figure those out now. People always like when we, when I do the theme after seeing the revealer. Gains favor using abject flattery informally. Gains favor using abject flattery informally. Maybe this will be harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, I don't know. Sucks up to. Oh, kisses. Yes, because um, X's in, uh, are used in written language to communicate a kiss. So kisses up to, there we go. And then what was the other one? Here we go. We have souse. So it could be a drunk or it could mean to drown something in liquid. Um, Alcoholic? No. Because because those three X's can mean alcohol. I guess that's the sort of poison equivalent that I was mentioning before. I mean, I'm sure it has something to do with that, but I I don't quite know what what word we're looking for, what word or phrase, probably phrase actually, based on the other ones. Um yeah, I'll need I'll need some crosses to confirm that, but I but it's got to be something around that, right? Anyway, popular bumper sticker of the two thousands. Not sure, and one facing the crew. Okay, well the Cox or Coxswain in a um that that relates to the uh, Oring, the person who will um who will uh, you know uh, guide or command the. Uh, the boat. Okay. Goddess often depicted with wings. Eos, I would think. Co oh, coexist. Right. That the bumper sticker that says coexist. And then each of the letters is, is spelled, uh, with a religious icon or something that alludes to a particular religion. You used to see that all the time. Spot on a sundial. Um, could, oops, not 
There we go. Could be 12 on a sundial in Roman numerals. And a Nintendo console is a Wii. This is about the third or fourth time that this is this console has come up in the last maybe month. Calendar, I suppose <laughs> that might be one for the ages in terms of becoming a new bit of crossword ease, a new word that is now part of the lexicon that uh, is useful seemingly in crosswords. Calendar units, abbreviation weeks, WKS, and places people speak in whispers. Um, apses in a church or something? I'm not sure. Probably not. Remains to be seen. There's a question mark, so some kind of pun here. I mean, I wonder if it's like an urn? Someone's remains, someone's ashes, their remains, and you don't see the ashes themselves, but you see the urn? I don't know. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, having everything one needs. Set, perhaps? In the sense you could say, I'm set. I'm having everything. Well, he, yeah, the state of having everything. No, it doesn't quite work. Not the right part of speech, I don't think. Having everything one needs. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's move on for now. Part of a ballroom dance. A dip, maybe? Pol no. We'd have two Apus in the same puzzle. That would be odd. Police dispatch, for short. Oh. Maybe this isn't kisses up to... Could this possibly be kisses butt, maybe? Because that would allow police dispatch to be APB, an all-points bulletin, when a police... Uh, dispatcher um, issues, I don't know what you'd call it, a lookout, I suppose, for uh, a particular person to all points, an all points bulletin, it's going out everywhere. Anyway, that would fit dip, and then at actress SpaceX, sissy SpaceX, I think I think SpaceX actually was in the puzzle in the last few days, clued the other way around as actress sissy. And idiosyncrasies could be ticks, you could have a little ticks, an idiosyncrasy, something that you do that's particular to you that not everybody does. A long, long time. Deca gear? I don't know. No, it doesn't fit. doesn't even fit. Uh, don't, not sure offhand. Gentleman from Genoa. Uh, Signor in Italian. And Lady Gaga or Kylie Minogue. So it's an or clue, not an and clue. So even though there are two, we just always, I always point this out because it's easy to, I get this mixed up sometimes too. It's easy to get it mixed up. Uh, it's an or clue. So it means this will be a singular answer, even though we have two examples of them. And so if it's singular, I believe it'll be gay icon. Either Lady Gaga or Kylie Minogue is a gay icon singularly. Uh, a long, long time. Decades, maybe? I didn't think decade before because it doesn't fit, but I suppose it's true that a single decade maybe doesn't qualify as a long, long time, but I guess you could argue that decades plural does. I don't know. I'll leave it in there for now. We'll see. Public houses, inns, pubs, uh, square. I don't know. Why do I not see that? That's annoying. Traveling performers. Is Kiss's butt wrong after that APB worked? Showing evidence of a beach... No, I guess not. Showing uh, evidence of a beach holiday is tanned. Animal, animal, vegetable, or mineral. Each of those, singular again, is a noun. Uh, and I think that probably refers to... Um, what is it? The 20 questions game where you... you know, Is it an is animal, vegetable, or mineral, etc.? All right. Uh -uh. Nope, I guess that is. And here we have coaster, a sled, perhaps. Oh, I see. Square is uncool. I <laughs> I thought of several possible meanings for square in there, which in the sense of a square meal or something that is physically square or we're square as in where you're paid up, you don't owe me any more money. Um, and I forgot this one, which is square meaning uncool. New Deal initials. Um... New Deal. This would be the FDR's social programs. Why can I not remember what that is? Traveling Perform NRA. I don't remember what that stands for in this case. That's very annoying. 
It's not the National Rifle Association, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, traveling performers are a troop. And that, that's where they, that's where I got that R from um, troop for traveling performers. Oh, I, I'm sure I know what this is too, and I just can't bring it to mind. And a coaster is indeed a sled. All right, let's go back up to the acrosses and finish off the puzzle. Places people speak in whispers, right? That was what I skipped. <laughs> Having everyone one needs, skip that as well. A beer topper, foam. Foam tops a beer. Remains to be seen, so probably not urn. Remains to be seen. And there's a question mark, so there is some kind of pun here. Um... I don't know. I'm sorry. Hotel door feature. Um, could have one of those. What do you call those? The lock that you flip over when the door is closed. I don't remember. It has some kind of key card reader often. Um, I don't know. I'm clearly not arriving at it. Social justice catchphrase. I'm sure this will be obvious with some crosses. The blank show daytime TV staple beginning in 20, 2009. No idea. Have because of. Oh, to. I owe this to you. I have it because of you. Move stealthily would be tiptoe. Evansville baseball team or Erie ice hockey team. Well, here's <laughs> very much not a British clue, that's for sure. Um, Oilers? I've heard of there being teams called the Oilers. I have no idea if either of these are that. I don't think it is. Otters, perhaps. How about that? That looks better. And and the uh, <laughs> I saw this double I, and then once again, I thought, well, we can't have we again, just as we can't have um, whatever that other three-word answer was again, Apu. So Google result is a hit. Um, when you search on the web and you get a result, that's a hit. Go for is opt for, choose something. A Pac-12 conference player, um, probably Oot from Utah would be my guess. And, oh, a Sout, Sous, sorry, Sous, Sous is a booze hound. There we go. So it was, I was on the right track in the sense of saying an alcoholic, but I in no way was <laughs> anywhere close to booze hound. And um, I'm not surprised that I wasn't. So we have our final theme answer, booze being indicated. I guess, I don't know. I mainly remember that from cartoons, to be honest. You'd have a, a, a bottle of some unalcohol, uh, some unspecified alcohol, and it would have three X's on it to indicate booze. I don't know if that um, has a real world counterpart, although presumably something inspired it in cartoons. Fire starters for short, pyros, pyromaniacs. Man, that's something. Oh, wow, maybe? Not really sure. Let's check the crosses. Life after death. Uh, obit? An obituary? In other words, a description of someone's life after their death? Doesn't, qu doesn't fit perfectly, but it does have the question mark indicating some kind of wordplay. So it could be that. Uh, I mean, class could be ilk. A certain class, a certain type, a certain ilk. Aid for driving... Yeah, I don't know about this. Hotel door peach. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. Peephole? Maybe it's not foam for the beer topper. What about this? Oh, aid for driving a T. Driving a go in golf, not in um, an automobile. I see. T. A golf T. Ah, social justice catchphrase, stay woke. So the foam doesn't fit here. So what is this? Or foam rather does fit here. But what is this? Beer topper. Having everything one needs. I mean, that could be set. Remains to be seen. Maybe it is ash as opposed to urn. Oh, it's head. It's not foam, it's head. It's the, <laughs> it's the head of foam. All right, very good. And then the draws show, or it must be the Dr. Oz show, daytime TV staple beginning in 2009. I don't know what that is. Um, but it must be right. <laughs> and a hotel door feature, it must be a peephole. Places, be oh, look at that, it is apses. So it, it was a place in a church. 
and remains to be seen is Ash. There we go. All right, so that was a uh, a nice theme with that with that triple X there. Um, I suppose we, in theory, could have had this clued as something like, um, you know, film franchise featuring Vin Diesel or a symbol for this. You know, we could this could have been clued as its own word, um, but in this case, it wasn't. Not like it would have. Wouldn't have been a better theme with that thing I said or anything like that. It's just this could also conceivably be its own its own word. Anyway, so what did we have? We had adult teeth with triple X meaning adult, thirty rock with the X's meaning thirty in Roman numerals, kisses butt with the X's representing kisses in written speech, and booze hound with the X's representing booze. So a very fun theme from John Eubank, and. If I had to stretch for a British connection here, you could imagine um, any of these things, conceivably adult 30 kisses or booze in a cryptic crossword without um, any kind of pun indicator or anything like that, serving as um, needing to be replaced with X's in the um, in the actual clue. It's the kind of thing that happens in cryptic crosswords. Um as the as the uh, as the name of the puzzle indicates, more cryptically than you'd get in uh, in a traditional American style crossword. Um, but I, I could be going out on a limb and reaching a bit and trying to find that connection. Anyway, that was um, that was a fun puzzle by John Eubank. I think a pretty pretty good um, level of difficulty for a Thursday. I would say that was calibrated very well for a Thursday puzzle. It wasn't a complete pushover, but it wasn't um, you know impossibly difficult. And we had a nice theme. Um, so let me know how you fared with this crossword today. I really do think we is becoming a new piece of crossword ease. Um, I think it's happening. I think, although you know, it'll be interesting to see in, I don't know, 10 years or so, if it, if that, uh, device is remembered sufficiently that it can actually remain as a bit of crossword ease. Perhaps it will come and go. I don't know. But it certainly has been quite common recently, I've noticed. Anyway, that was that. That was the Thursday crossword. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. If you uh, subscribe, you'll see these videos as they go up each day very easily. And um, if you know someone who might enjoy this sort of thing, please do pass it along, um, either directly, person to person, in the manner of the uh, Jeff Goldblum iMac commercials back in the day, or in a way that was not yet available to those commercials at the time through your social media um, network of choice or your online community, whatever it may be. Um, word of mouth is the only way that I really have to spread this series. So to the extent you could help with that, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, all right, I suppose that's it. Let's solve that wordle. <laughs> Um, here we go. So the way this works, this is, um, I'll, I'll put a link to Wordle in the description field underneath each video. Um, well, maybe not in each, not under each video, probably, but under, uh, under today's video anyway, so you can, you can play this yourself. And I've actually only ever done it on my phone. So I don't, I wonder if I can use my computer keyboard. Um, yeah, Okay. I don't know why I just typed about, but that's the word I decided to start with. So the way you play this is you put in a five-letter word, and all right. So what this means is, if I can remember correctly the colors, I think what this means is that my O was in, is in the correct position. In other words, the final word that we're trying to determine has an O in the third position. And it also has a T, but the T is not in this position, so it's a different color. So let's try, and, and the A, B, and U in gray are not present in the word at all. Let's try stock. Um, that preserves the position of the O and puts a T in, in a different position. All right, so didn't really do any better. I ruled out S, C, and K and still don't have the right uh, position for the T. Uh, let's try 
trope. How about this? So here we have, again, we preserve the position of the U, try yet another position for the T, and we don't use any of our ruled out letters, I don't think. Okay, getting close. So something that I learned in Wordle the other day, which was very surprising to me, um, because it hadn't been true for any of the previous ones I'd solved, is that you can't have repeated letters. Um, I don't actually know what the sort of coloring convention is around repeated letters. But anyway, uh, I'm not sure if that will take effect here. And usefully, we can see on the, on the little on-screen keyboard, we can see that it colors the letters appropriately to help avoid typing letters that have been ruled out. So what should we try? It could be, I don't know, troll, perhaps, if it was a repeated letter. Let's try it. Why not? Hey, it was. Look at that. Okay, boy. I and uh, <laughs> and I my statistics are a single game played on on this computer. Be, oops, because I how do I get that back? Guess I can't. Anyway, because um, all my other games are on my phone. Uh, so there we have it. There's there's the Wordle. Just a fun little thing that uh, I thought I would do on the video because people have been doing it in the uh, Discord chat server, which again you can join. And I think it's the Other Puzzles channel where people have been posting their Wordle. Boy, that's annoying that I can't get my, um, I can't show you what I meant. What if I refresh this? There it is. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. Oh, I guess, well, I don't know. You'll have to go <laughs> if you want to see what I mean in terms of how you share the little icon that shows your, your uh, Wordle solving history for the day, you'll have to go into the Discord chat server and look at all the ones everyone else has posted. And of course, there's a link to that in the description field underneath the video. Anyway, all that being said, I'll wrap this video up for the day. I hope you will join me again tomorrow for the Friday puzzle, the first themeless puzzle of the week. And, um, and if Thursday's the first tricky puzzle of the week, maybe Friday's the first really difficult puzzle of the week. I don't know. That's a pretty arbitrary distinction. And of course, any, any puzzle on any day of the week can be difficult, depending on how it strikes you. But that is sort of how I think about it. Friday is really when it gets hard. Um, so do, do come back for that tomorrow. And let me know if you want to see me solve these <laughs> wordles at the end of the puzzle. I sort of just did that on a lark today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, you'll be back tomorrow. And I particularly hope that until then, you have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.